Now, the huge amount of PPE being created and disposed of has thrown the spotlight back on plastic pollution and what we can do to tackle single-use items. Well, now a UK-based technology company has begun the building the world's first commercial-scale plant to recycle all forms of plastic waste. The plan is to break down used items to create raw ingredients that can then be used to make new plastic. Well, joining me now, Steve Marn, he's chief executive at Mura Technology. Uh, Steve, welcome to you. This is the first of a number of plants that you're planning to construct. How much do they cost to build, roughly? Well, each one is, um, the one in Teesside is about 30 million sterling. Um, and around the world, they typically be larger than that. There'll be larger plants. So each one's roughly 100 million sterling. Now, what, uh, what's the technology behind this? How do you, how do you make, uh, what makes plastic unrecyclable and how are you tackling that? Well, the reason these plastics are unrecyclable is they tend to be the products that others can't recycle. So if you take uh, water bottles and things like that, they can be recycled. But yogurt pots, films, flexibles, ready uh, meal packaging, that can't be recycled easily. So we have a solution which can take all of those unrecyclable plastics, which is almost half of all plastics, and recycle them. Our solution is we use, um, we use what we have here, water, which is where we do, which is different to everyone else. We use water as the solvent which breaks down plastics into their constituent parts to go back into the manufacturing of new plastics. And, and how do you do that? As far, as far as steam, I gather, you use steam to break down the bonds within these plastics. Yeah, that's right. So... I think you think about it as, you know, like you're cooking. So it's very easy. If you want to scale up cooking pasta or rice, you can make a much bigger pot, which is, you know, our real advantage is we can do this at scale. So when you take water to high pressures and temperatures, it acts like a very aggressive solvent. So it breaks down like a scissors, really snips through the chains till you get much smaller chains, which are liquids and gases. So water is the key component and it's the key part of our proprietary system which other people aren't using. Thanks for keeping that simple. It's many years since I did organic chemistry. Um, the fact that you are using steam, does that mean that the plant is quite energy intensive? No, it's actually extremely efficient because some of the gas we make, we put back, it's a combustible gas, so we use that to power the process. And our conversion of from plastics into product is over 99%. So it's really one of the most efficient systems that we are aware of in the market. So you're, at the end of this process, you've got uh, raw plastic feedstock. Have you got contracts from uh, buyers for that? What well, we do, and I think we have no shortage of buyers. That's the real attraction to this. The market is huge and untapped. I mean, we think it's about $120 billion dollar market opportunity that at the moment there is just a shortage of recycled oils so what we're looking to do is sell into that so i could probably sell 50 times the volume of the first plant in teesside today if i had it so it's um it's a very deep uh, liquid market which is shorter product now you're partnering with uh, kbr the engineering solutions group to uh, roll out these these plants does that preclude you licensing the technology to other partners well, KBR are our licensing partners, so they'll license to everyone in the world and we'll be building our own plants. KBR are a great partner because they can serve, they've got 38,000 engineers all around the world. They can help service uh, customers in countries which we can't. So for us, it was a way of accelerating the rollout of our technology and ultimately reducing the cost of capital. The more plants that get built, the lower the cost of capital for our own plants and therefore the enhanced economics for our own plants. Steve, we've only got about a minute left. I'd love to hear your perspective on how easy it's been for you over the years to get hold of capital. I mean, this is a British company coming up with technology that a lot of the rest of the world has been trying to develop. How hard has it been to get it off the ground? Well, Ian, timing is always um, critical. So we were ahead of the curve, we were ahead of regulations, but the market has come to us. And so I think the key has been surviving and keep developing and finding the right partners but now we find ourselves at a point where the market is really recognising the need and the opportunity and we're, we're sort of delighted that the kind of response we're getting and the new partners and the new equity that we're bringing into the business. So it has been hard, but you've got to stay in the game until the market comes to you, and I'm pleased to say that it has. Good stuff. Well, it's an absolutely fascinating topic. I do hope you'll come and talk to us again about it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Ian.